Boy oh boy oh boy how things have changed. It's been a while now since we made a video talking about the My Hero Academia manga and my god have things gotten crazy. This video is for my manga readers. Sorry anime only fans, the next video will be for you guys. Right now, we're talking about manga. Alright, now that the casuals are gone, to the real fans, let's get into it. I'm just joking, I know it's all just a matter of preference. For a while I too didn't read the manga, so I get it. But really now, let's get into it. You may or may not have seen a video I made about 8 months ago, which is crazy to think about that it's been so long, but yeah, you may or may not have seen it, but in that video I was talking about the change in Shigaraki happening during the overhaul arc, post all for one imprisonment, and at that time we were all wondering what would become of Shigaraki without his master by his side. I had concerns about how he'd perform without guidance, but I knew he would grow from the whole ordeal to become a better leader and strategist. At the end of the video, I made it clear that I believed the League would come to rule the underworld, and man, I can't imagine there's any organization or individual in Japan's underworld that can rival the League now. Oh, my bad. Not the League. How could I forget that we've dropped that tacky name since merging with the Liberation Army to now become the Paranormal Liberation Front, which is a different kind of bad when it comes to name quality. But anyway, how did we get here? How did Shigaraki and his League grow so much? so quickly. Well, like most cases involving growth, this came out of necessity. They needed to grow. They needed to progress. There wasn't an option to take their time and grow steadily. It needed to happen now. While he had the support of Dr. Ujiko, kinda, it really felt like Shigaraki was a child forced out of his family home. He had no choice but to grow up without all for one by his side. There was a vision to chase, and all his league members were counting on him to find a way. Looking for a solution came the partnership with Overhaul, which went south and led to an all-out battle that saw the League escaping with the quirk-destroying drug. Prayers up for Mirio, man. Overhaul's life work, it gave them a possible means of causing chaos in the future, but they had one problem. They were broke. Dirt broke. Desperate for cash and as a result searching for Dr. Ujiko, all for one's longtime partner, they came across Gigantomachia, who allowed them to contact the doctor, who made it clear that to gain access to the resources left for him, Shigaraki needed to use his own hands. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended. Starting with making Giganto Makiya yield to him. Not an easy task. All the League's strength targeted towards him couldn't even make Giganto Makiya flinch. They fought him for over a month, which of course made them stronger. Because of course, the stronger your opponent, the more you'll progress when against them. But this wasn't really even the catalyst that made the League now so terrifying. What triggered that was the Meta Liberation Army and their stressed penguin looking leader, Redestro. You see, the Liberation Army could have just kept on their own path, but they decided to step in the League's way. They had a whole city fighting for them and several high tier members that were on par with members of the League. I can't blame them for their confidence, I mean, they had a whole city, members with strong quirks, and what they thought was all the intel needed on the League. Shit, I'd be confident too. Unfortunately for them though, this confrontation would lead to them becoming, well, the League's bitch. I mean, look at Destro now compared to before. He's their bitch. I can't describe it any other way, and I don't want to. Not only did these fights level up the League members, the fights, plus his lack of sleep, helped Shigaraki overcome the shackles of his childhood. He was already a scary threat to society, but a clear-headed Shigaraki just sounds crazy. He accomplished so much before he even freed himself from his trauma. Imagine what's next. Look at what he has access to now, with more coming soon from the doctor. And look at that fire ass quirk which even I disrespected before. He's on a roll. Now, for a moment, I'd like to take a step outside of the events that directly happened to Shigaraki because there was something else that made this growth necessary. And that is the ninth possessor of one for all, Midoriya Izuku. When I saw that this man would have access to more than one quirk, my thought was Shigaraki will 100% need to be gifted all for one. The quirk, not the man. But now, with Decay returning to its peak, and the strength of all the members of the League increased, besides the always mysterious Dobby of course. I now think maybe the potential gap in power isn't so large after all. Shigaraki and Midoriya's progression is something that should and probably will always stay in sync. The story is about the two of them. So this was another reason for such sudden growth. Man, I like Shigaraki, he's definitely my favorite character and I'm excited for his future. The Paranormal Liberation Front is lethal. Even the number 2 hero Hawks knows it. The hero society is in trouble. That man-child, as they called him early on, has grown up. And is not to be taken lightly. How fitting that the man on a mission to destroy everything 
has a quirk that decays everything instantly that it touches. That's all I have for you guys right now. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There's no shortage of My Hero Academia content here for you with more on the way. Until next time, I am Young Kami J. Have a great day. Goodbye.